Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. I uh, thought I'd uh, address a few things today. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, when I started this channel, it really wasn't going to be a channel about bed bugs, but it seems that that's what a lot of people call me. A lot of people message me, email me, and ask me questions about bed bugs. Uh, apparently, it's a it's reaching pandemic proportions across the entire United States. Uh, in fact, I get uh, calls worldwide about it, about how uh, severe they are, about how bad they are, and a lot of people just don't know what to do, uh, if there even is something you can do as a homeowner in order to be able to eliminate bed bugs or even try to, uh, you know, prevent getting them in the first place. Um, this is mainly a video just to explain the differences in treatments and treatment options that you have as a homeowner. Uh, in order to get rid of bed bugs. Um, if you like the video, uh, be sure to thumb up my YouTube video. If you uh, li really like it and you want to see more like it, um, subscribe to my channel so you can get video updates. I try to do a video Monday, Tuesday, somewhere around there, and, and Fridays uh, is usually when I try to get a video uploaded. So, um, Also, I have a Facebook. It's Green Acres Pest Control LLC. You search me out on Facebook. My website is greenacrespc.com. So now that that's all out of the way, um, I just wanted to uh, try to discuss a little differences, different ways that you can treat for bed bugs in your own home. Uh, if you call an exterminator, what you're going to expect out of an exterminator. I'm an exterminator, been an exterminator for uh, nearly 30 years, have a lot of experience. Um, bed bugs are pretty bad now. They've eliminated a lot of the chemicals uh, from the market uh, that we, uh, not only as pesticide applicators, but you as a consumer um, also can use and get a hold of. Um, back years ago, we used to use uh, Dursban. Uh, Dursban was a uh, chlorpyrifos, the active ingredient. I may have butchered that, but I've always pronounced it as chlorpyrifos as the active ingredient of Dursban. Um, Dursban was a general use pest pesticide that pretty much every pest control technician used uh, back when it was readily available, easy to get a hold of everywhere. Um, it was fairly inexpensive. It was organophosphate. Uh, it's the family of pesticides it belonged to. And it was fairly effective at getting rid of not only bed bugs, but ants. Uh, it was a good general use pesticide. People would use it around the outside of their homes, indoors, around their baseboards. Had a weird kind of a smell. It wasn't the the you know the best chemical as far as odor it wasn't a toxic vapor it just had petroleum distillate inside the uh, chemical that helped carry the pesticide and so it smelled until it dried because like oil-based paint uh, oil-based paints have petroleum distillates in them as well and so that's that smell you get when when the paint's drying and that chemical was outlawed uh, and taken off the shelves uh, in the early 2000s and when that chemical was taken away from uh, general pest control technicians like myself, um, the bed bugs began to be a, a pretty serious problem uh, all across the United States. Now, I'm not going to attribute that wholly because, you know, another chemical also disappeared from the market around the same time, and that was diazinon. Uh, more people are familiar with diazinon because it's something people would buy for around the outside of their homes, uh, came in granulated form or liquid. Uh, Durasban also had, they were Durasban granules you could use as well for around the outside of the home. But the most common thing people would buy was diazinon. Uh, you know, a lot of the people would have bags of it in their sheds and they would use it, they would treat their yards for ants and various different bugs like that too. And like I said, diazinon as a liquid pesticide was also general use pest control uh, pesticide that people would use inside and outside of their homes. Now, uh, when these chemicals were eliminated from the market, they were the most vastly used organophosphates around. There are some others that are still around, like orthene and different ones, but for the vast majority of people, they use Durasban or Diazinon. Um, when those chemicals were outlawed, the, the pesticides that replaced organophosphates were uh, synthetic pyrethroids, uh, and they, albeit they're, they're a good pesticide, they're not horrible. 
Um, it's just bed bugs are uh, in 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 the general population are immune to synth most all synthetic pyrethroids. There are very few synthetic pyrethroids that will kill bed bugs, and so now you run into a problem where even you as a consumer or me as a, a you know pest control technician, it's very difficult because when the market moved from organophosphates to synthetic pyrethroids, we ran into a resistance issue with bed bugs and this is why chemical application when you I mean a lot of people call me and they'll tell me this oh well you know they've tried everything they've bought the bed bug chemicals they've bought sprays they've bought liquids they've uh, used diatomaceous earth a dust which I'll get into that later um, and there's nothing that they can do it seems like that will even help get rid of this problem and I try to explain to them that you know the reason why that you know you spray and you're spending hundreds of dollars you know spraying your own home trying to treat around you know your beds and everything and it's not killing them is because the bed bugs are already immune to those chemicals even though bed bugs are on the label and the chemical is labeled to kill bed bugs it's not going to be effective so that's where you get into heat treatments um and this is what really spurred this channel and got a lot of people interested in my channel was I came home from work and I made a video about why heat treatments are not successful in eliminating bed bugs and I go into some pretty good detail in that video and if you want I'm not going to get into it here because like I said I do have other videos about it and uh, you know I'm not going to say the same old tired thing but uh, go check out that video I'll leave it in the end notes so you can just click a little box or you can check down in the description below you can go look at it now if you want to but um, heat treatments are, they can be effective. Now I'm using that very loosely because I have gone behind so many exterminators who have done heat treatments and they have not worked. Um, the problem with a heat treatment is it has a very high potential to run the bed bugs because it heats up the environment and you know they try to seek a cool place to to get away from the heat machines. Now, one of the biggest sales techniques of a heat treatment, and this is what I hear time and time again, this is what exterminators are using on their potential customers. They'll tell them, uh, well, you know, if you take a frog and you sit it in a pot of boiling water, now the pot, pot the water is not boiling right away. You know, you take a frog and you put it in a pot of water, sit the pot of water on the stove, turn the burner on, and let the heat rise inside that pot of water and the frog will die because it will eventually be boiled to death because the temperature slowly rises and the frog ends up dying because he has nowhere to go and he dies and he doesn't realize that the water is getting hot all around him because his temperature rises with the water and it kills him now that sounds really good because that's true that's that's a way that they kill frogs is you know when they're going to cook frogs for people which I, I don't know I don't have a taste for them myself but but um anyway that's a really good analogy and it sounds really good if you live in a pot but people don't live in pots people live in homes homes that have cracks and crevices and holes uh, around your windows and your doors and your baseboards and your wall sockets and your outlet covers and uh, the list goes on and on all the different places that bed bugs can retreat to get inside your wall and hibernate inside your uh, hibernate I don't know why I said hibernate I'm thinking of stink bugs because they're swarming real bad today um, but no the uh, they, if they can get into the wall and they can escape the heat they will now, I explain to people when I'm given this analogy about, you know, bed bugs not being able to get rid of heat or a frog in boiling water. And I tell them, all right, let's an aquarium. Let's, let's have a big source of water like your home. You know, it's not a pot. It's a house. It's pretty large. So let's take a large environment like an aquarium and we'll put a hot plate in the aquarium and we'll heat that one spot of water really hot, hot enough to kill a frog if he stays in it. Where is the frog going to go if the water gets hot? The frog is going to swim away from the hot water into the cooler water. That's what frogs, snakes, reptiles, amphibians, that's what they do in the environment. When the sun gets hot and shines down on them and they get really, really hot, 
they go under a porch or they go under a deck or they go into the water and they seek a cooler place so they can live because they're cold-blooded and if they don't, they'll cook to death and they know this. So, if a bug can get away from the heat, they will get away from the heat. You'll kill a lot of bugs. A lot of bugs will die from the heat. But if they can get away from it, they will, which is why you usually advise people to take their clothes, if they've got bed bugs in their clothes or their sheets and their comforters and everything, and put them in a, uh, you know, a real hot dryer or put them in the washing machine on hot water and then dry them on high heat and that'll kill the bed bugs because they have nowhere to go. They, they, don't, they can't escape the dryer. They can't escape the washing machine. They have nowhere to go. Now that theory of the pot and the boiling water and the frog works because it's a machine. It's a washing machine and they can't go anywhere or it's a dryer and they can't go anywhere. So that's a really effective way to kill them in your bed. Now, there are chemicals on the market that you can buy. Now, I don't normally list pesticides uh, that can be used to eliminate bed bugs because you can't buy chemicals in every state of the union. There are certain states that you cannot find certain pesticides. You're just you're not allowed to buy them. They've whether it's prohibited by that state or what. Uh, maybe they they only require that you have a license in order to buy them. Um, so that's something that you you have to keep in mind when i list pesticides here and some some states may not allow the use of pesticides for bed bugs it just depends on the label depends on the state and so you need to think about that when you're buying your pesticides always obey the label always it doesn't matter what the label says if you think you can treat it better but it actually it always matters what the label says you always apply by the label that's what the label is there for um, you know, if you buy a bed and it's got screws and it's got a screwdriver and everything, you don't go and grab a hammer and bang the screws in. You use a screwdriver, use a proper tool, follow the directions, follow your label of your pesticide. Don't mix it any stronger just because you think the label's not strong enough. It is. It will work. Um, but anyway, to get on to this, the two, two really good pesticides that I have used myself that work really well on the elimination of bed bugs Crossfire, that's one that's only labeled for bed bugs. Can't really treat anything else with it. It's only for bed bugs. It's a pretty good pesticide. I've had really good results with it. Uh, diatomaceous earth, which is a dust, uh, that's really effective. It's slow, but it will kill bed bugs. It can't get immune to it because it's made from diatoms. It's a uh, which are organisms, little crushed up crustacean type organisms, uh, made into a dust. That's what it is. Um, that's pretty effective, but you don't want to put it out real thick. It won't work. You have to put it really thin. The way I describe people is get yourself a duster. You can find them at Walmart, like a little Bella's duster, um, like $12, $13, walmart.com. I'll link that in the description below as well. And you want to puff it to where you can't even see it when it lands, like the dust that collects on your television screen or your computer monitor. Um, and that's how thin you want it if you're going to treat for bed bugs. That's what you want to do. You can treat in the cracks behind your baseboards and places with it. But don't put too much because it's a little goes a long way with diatomaceous earth. It's really effective if it's in very small amounts. Also, uh, Alpine WSG, which is a water-soluble granule, uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty good chemical. It's a little more restrictive on what you can and can't use it for. Uh, it's also um, it's a general use, so it can be used for... Uh, ants or um, cockroaches. Uh, I believe yellow jackets is also on the list. But like I said, really refer to your label. Make sure you're going to apply it properly. I don't think you can use it on the mattress. Pretty sure you can't. Um, but Crossfire can be used on your mattress. So that's usually my go-to chemical, and I've had really good success with it. In houses, I haven't really had very good success with Crossfire. That's when I switch and use like Alpine or something else. And so that's your two chemicals for the day uh good luck on your bed bugs i really hope you're able to do something about it if not you may need to call a professional and have them come in but if they're going to do a heat treatment i wouldn't hire them but like i said check my videos out i've got one on heat treatments i've got a couple of do-it-yourself videos in there too i don't won't be able to put them all on the on the end notes of the screen here but i will put them on my uh in the description below all my all the different videos i've got on bed bugs um and I hope this has really answered a lot of questions that people have had because I know that it is a growing problem in the United States all across the world. And I hope that this can help you guys. And uh, 
If you, like I said, check out my website, check out my Facebook, send me a message if you have any other questions or leave me a comment below. And I try, I read all my comments and I leave messages for people all the time. So uh, I'm not too busy for you. Uh, Y'all have a great day. I really appreciate it. And I'll be talking to you later.